Hey guys, welcome to week 10. Here we go, starting with learning two. It's an easy week, but has a lot of really great experiments, so let's get to it. So last week we really started talking about behavior therapies and watching how dogs react to salvation and conditioning, and then of course we have our Skinner chambers and all that stuff. This week we're gonna really start talking about cognition. So before, like I was saying, we talk about behavior and watching that. Now we're trying to think of why people do the things we do. How those mental events take place in a person's mind and how that affects them behaving. So it's not just of why people do what they do, but kind of how as well as the motivations behind it. So the first one we're going to study this week is Edward Tolman. Now he's going to be a very early um, cognitive psychologist, and he is going to start with rats. Now um, Tolman's big theory is Latin learning. Now he believes that he can teach rats uh, three different phases, different ways of learning, because he believes that there's learning being done even without reinforcement. So with group one, he rewards um, each rat at the very end of the maze. How it is important to note that they learn the map, the maze very, very quickly. So group one gets a treat every time they complete the maze, and they learn quickly. Group two is in the maze every single day, but only rewarded on the 10th day. Now they did demonstrate, even though they weren't reinforced all the time, they did demonstrate learning of the maze. However, they really did not become quick, only until receiving a ward. And group, group three did learn the maze, However, they did not get rewarded and they did not learn the maze well. So what that tells us is that learning is there and learning is being done without reinforcement. However, learning is faster, more effective with reinforcement. Okay, so Latin learning is learning that remains hidden until its application becomes useful or until the application gets you food. And that's what we're going to see with the mice. Now here's an example. Now we did watch a video clip of this on in class. I'll post a link to that YouTube video as well. Now here's a typical maze. As we're going to see, the rats have to kind of figure their way in and out. And the more effective learning is, is when you are in fact reinforced. So it makes sense that the first group that was reinforced all the time is the fastest, but Latin learning is important because the rats did learn the maze well enough without reinforcement that once they were provided that motivation, they did learn quickly. Now the other type of learning theory we're studying this week is insight. Now insight is the sudden perception of relationships among various parts of the problem, which allow the solution to come quickly. So insight learning is when you're like, oh my god, I can't think of something, and then you start doing something else, you're like, oh my god, I figured it out. Okay, now insight learning, it's important to know it cannot be figured out by trial and error learning alone. Okay, you can't sit there and try and try and try and try to do it. It's just one of those things that just kind of comes to you, like an aha moment. Um, in insight learning, we showed a video of a chimpanzee who was trying to get the peanut out of the tall cylinder, and eventually by using water, he kind of just kind of figured out, oh, hey, if I use water, I can get it up. Um, click a link to that as well. Now, learned helplessness is what we're going to see with um, Seligman. Now, Seligman is a famous scientist behind this, and he discovered learned helplessness. Now, learned helplessness is the tendency to fall, uh, to fail to act, to escape from a situation because of history of repeated failures. Now, Seligman's uh, famous experiment is uh, depressed dogs. When the dogs are getting electrocuted with 100% uh, trapped in a cage, 100%, even though they decrease the amount of area within the cage that is going to electrocute the dogs, the dogs learn not to even try. So by the end of the experiments, the dogs just lie in the cage and get electrocuted and don't even try to help themselves because they learned that nothing they could do mattered. So they quit trying. Now, observational learning is our, probably the most important of all of these learning structures. It is a new learning by watching or modeling or watching a model perform behavior. Now, what that is, is um, when you watch someone and mimic their behavior. Most of your social interactions, social standards, what's acceptable and what is not, is all done by social or observational learning. We're going to talk about observational again when we get to social learning. It is how we decide what is appropriate and what is not appropriate in any type of social situation. Now, learning performance or distinction is referring to the observation that can take place uh, without actual performance of a learned behavior. Like, for instance, when you see 
um, someone trip down the stairs, you see everyone laugh. You don't have to trip down the stairs to know that you don't want to do that. You don't need to mimic that person's behavior. You also can figure out things very quickly by watching how people react. If someone tells a joke in poor taste and everyone reacts negatively to it, you know, okay, I'm not going to make a joke about that. If you hear someone um, say something that everyone laughs and responds to, you're going to make a similar joke or you know it's okay to joke about things like that. So learning performance distinction. You don't necessarily have to mimic it, but you know what is appropriate and what's not appropriate. Now, the most famous of the experiments are going to be Bandora's Bobo doll experiment, which is when the kids watch a video of adults beating up the Bobo doll, then they go into a room and they mimic that behavior. Essentially, we, by watching something, we think it's appropriate. So little kids have that distinction. We'll talk about it more in class. Now, there's four major of elements to observational learning, attention, a memory, uh, imitation, and of course motivation. So you can't learn something if you're not paying attention. You have to be able to retain it. It has to be clearly in your mind. Imitation, you have to be capable of reproducing. Like for instance, um, I can't lift 300 pounds at the gym. Like it's just impossible. So I don't try. I don't try to emulate someone who can do it because there's no point. I can't do it. So you need to know what you can and what you can't do as well as motivation. Um, they must have the desire to form, form something. So you have to be paying attention and watching someone when they do it. You have to have the memory to retain it, um, the steps in preparing it, the steps in doing it. The imitation is you want to be like that person and then finding the motivation. Now, it's easy to remember the four, mem, uh, four ways by AIM, A-M-I-M which stands for the first law, if that helps. Now, real-world examples, cat, cat training, we shape, we prepare the training area, and we provide positive reinforcement on a variable schedule. So you can do it if you would like. Like I said, short week. Um, please make sure you watch the videos that are going to be in the playlist for this week. And um, I hope you guys have a great week. Good luck.